Hey guys, it's Julia. So today's video is going to be a get ready with me trying out a bunch of new makeup products. So I've got a basket full of kind of new releases and new makeup products on the market that I wanted to try out for you guys on camera. So among some of the new products I'm trying out, not all of them, but here are some of the ones that I'm really excited about are the Influencer Foundation from Sunday Riley, two of the new Dubious Place palettes, the Festival and the Saharan 2. I'm also gonna be using the mini Natasha Denona Blush and Glow. So yeah, that's just some of the products I'll be using in this video. I am creating a red makeup look in honor of Nikki Tutorial's brother, Mikai. Um, so I'll talk about that later in the video, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's get right into my get ready with me trying out new products. I'm gonna start off with foundation. I've already primed my skin. I use the Too Faced Primed and Peachy um, Cooling Matte Primer. And today for my foundation, I'm using the Sunday Riley, the Influencer Foundation. I've seen a lot of really bad reviews on this foundation. I still wanted to test it out for myself, even though it was a pretty expensive foundation. Um, not as expensive as I thought it was gonna be just because Sunday Riley is very pricey, but I do love their skincare, so I want to try this one out. It says it's a natural looking, long wear, lightweight feel, satin matte foundation, medium to full coverage. So that sounds like something I'd really enjoy. Um, um, and I'm in the shade 110. So we're gonna try this out. This is one of the few products that is a first impression per se. Um, just so you guys know, I don't really regard first impressions as a full review. I will definitely talk about this further on my channel once I've tried it out more. Today is just my first impression and I'd say like 70% of the time, my first impression is pretty much exactly what my final impression of the product is. So I'm gonna try this one out right now. I just did one pump on the back of my hand. That's normally what I use for foundations and it looks to be pretty liquidy. So I'm just gonna apply it to my face. Just blending it out, I know that it looks a little bit lighter than my actual skin tone, but normally foundations, when they do dry down, they look pretty much the same as my skin tone. I did wait for this one to dry down when I tried it out in Sephora, and this seemed to be the correct shade for me. So hopefully this will work out. I'd say this is blending pretty easily. Um, just looking at it, there's a decent amount of coverage going on. I'm just gonna blend it down my neck, just in case it doesn't dry down to my correct shade, but it looks pretty good. And then the undertone seemed nice for me. Um, it's kind of on the more neutral side. Pref Normally I prefer a more yellow undertone, but this will do. If you're wondering why I'm looking over here, that's because I have a mirror mounted up here so I can see what I'm doing. So here's where I'm nervous. I do have a lot of breakouts here. I just finished my semester, so that came with doing finals and stuff. So this is the product of extreme stress, but now that I'm out of my semester, hopefully this will clear up. I'm actually planning on doing a week this summer where I don't wear any makeup through the entire week. It's gonna be my like skin reset week. So I'm planning on vlogging that week and kind of showing you guys a progress of what happens to my skin when not wearing makeup for a whole week. But that's gonna have to wait until probably July because I need to pre-film a bunch of stuff in order to make that week happen because I won't be um, doing makeup looks for my Instagram or YouTube during that week, obviously. So um, yeah, planning to have that coming up soon, but uh, here's what the foundation looks like. I think it looks really, really nice. I don't see why this is getting so many bad reviews. Just looking at it right now on my face, it looks nice. Hopefully throughout the day, it'll look um, not bad as it kind of wears. Um, just feeling it though, I've heard a lot of people say it doesn't really set down on me. It just, it feels fine. It doesn't feel like it's transferring a lot or anything. So just right now, I really like this. We'll see how it wears. For concealer, I am trying out a new concealer as well. This is the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer. I am in the shade Fair. So I believe this is the lightest shade. And um, this concealer, it's not the most, oh, oh, it's a wand. I was expecting kind of like a, um, like a dab. I don't know what I was expecting actually, but it's a wand with a doe footed applicator. This is not the newest concealer on the market, but it is new to me. It kind of smells like paint. You guys know I hate paint scented um, complexion products like the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. Um, it's not as strong as that one, but it still kind of smells gross. So hopefully this one will work out. Just gonna do this under my under eyes right now. And again, I am blending with the AOA Studio um, blending sponge. This is the best blending sponge I've ever tried. It's better than the Beauty Blender in my opinion, way better than the Real Technique sponge, and it's only a dollar, so can't beat that. By the way, I just got a haircut, so this is my new hair length. It's a little bit shorter than it was before. Um, before I got my haircut, it was down to like almost my waist. It was actually like right at my waist. So it was really, really long and it was very thick as well. So I just kind of got it thinned out, layered a bit and um, it's shorter. Every single time I cut my hair though, I kind of hate it. I always am like, oh my God, my hair is gone. So I can't wait for it to grow out again. And that's just kind of an endless cycle I'm in because once it gets too long, I'm like, this is too much hair. I just got to get rid of it. And then when I cut it, it's like, oh my God, my hair is all gone. So, so yeah, I don't know. I know it's going to grow out eventually, but like 
it's kind of pulling teeth. So I just applied the concealer. It's a little bit um, dark for me, I guess. It looks great um, spot concealing, but underneath my eyes, it's just not bright enough for me. So I'm gonna try to correct that with some powder, but overall it's nice. It gave a good amount of coverage. It doesn't seem to be creasing on me. And um, yeah, the base is looking nice. And as you can see, I think it kind of settled into my skin. The color doesn't look too bad either. So I'm gonna move on to contouring. I do prefer to cream contour, so I'm just gonna use my Fenty Beauty Matchsticks. I don't really have a new cream contour to show you guys, but um, I really enjoy these ones. So I'll kind of just show you guys my cream contouring routine. I'm um, just drawing right under the cheekbones. And then this is the Light 100 set, so this is the shade Amber. And then I'm gonna go in with the concealer shade right underneath where I put the dark contour. And then for the nose, I don't like rubbing the stick directly onto my nose because that'll kind of lift up foundation in my experience. So I'll just take a brush, kind of dab it onto the sides and then um, apply my cream contour where I want it on the nose. And then same thing with that concealer stick, just gonna kind of take it with a brush and then carve out where I don't want the shadow to be. And then for my face, I like to use my e.l.f. cream contour brush and just kind of fluff them together. It's really hard for me to contour without my mouth just automatically going, so. Just take whatever's left on my brush and just kind of smudge it up here by the hairline. Okay, so now for powder, I don't want to go in with a different powder that I've never tried before just because I am using a new foundation and concealer, so I'm going to go in with my Tried and True Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. Just kind of lightly bake the under eyes. I don't do like a full-on, like... 10 grams of powder under each eye bake. I just kind of lightly dust a little bit of powder under there and then we'll brush that off later. I'm gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder in the shade Fair. I talked about this one in my new Makeup Favorites and Fails video. I said that I love this one. You guys wanted to see it on my face because I said that it was like velvety smooth and perfecting and um, I wanna prove that. So I'm just gonna dip in there, lightly just dust it all over my skin. So that is the powder on my face. I'm gonna come back and do blush, bronzer, highlighter later on. I'm gonna start on the eyes now. So as you might have seen by the title or the thumbnail, today's video is hashtag red for Mikai. So if you don't know, Mikai is the brother of Nikki Tutorials and he recently just passed away from cancer. So in Nikki's latest video, she kind of talked about her experience um, dealing with grief and her brother's passing and then she did a red makeup look to kind of honor him because it was his favorite color and um, it was just a really inspiring video. I bawled my eyes out during the entire video. It was so emotional for me. And um, I'm not what I like to call a huge crier. I'd say I'm a, like a selective crier. There's certain things, for example, up or like Hamilton during the entire second act, I was just bawling my eyes out. But um, one thing I don't really cry during is funerals. Um, I could be going to a very close to me loved one's funeral and I, I would just be sitting there stoic faced. Um, case in point, I went to my grandpa's funeral about a year ago and I didn't cry during the entire service and I felt like such a bad person for that. But everyone deals with grief differently in their own ways and it's important to remember that. You don't have to be crying all the time to be properly honoring someone's memory. Just got off on a tangent, but basically what I'm trying to say is I don't really cry that often, but this video had me sobbing. And I think everyone watching this video has probably had someone in their life that's been affected by cancer, whether it's um, a loved one that passed away from cancer, friend's loved one who passed away from cancer, a friend suffering from cancer, a loved one suffering from cancer, maybe you're suffering with cancer. In that moment, I felt horrible for Nikki and I felt the grief that she must have been feeling, but also so incredibly proud of her because she's so strong. Mikai is so strong. Nikki just means a lot to me. I'm sure she doesn't know who the hell I am, um, but she's inspired me a lot. If there's any way that I could honor someone that she loves, I would do it. And if that thing is putting makeup on my face, I will do it. So today's makeup look is going to be red for Mikai, just to honor his memory and do a red makeup look. So yeah, let's do this. Today I'm gonna to be using my Juvia's Place palettes. I am planning to do a full review of the palettes that I picked up from Juvia's Place. So that should be up on my channel very soon. But today I'm gonna to be using the Festival palette, which is their newest one. So very excited about this one. Oh no, the newest one is actually the Warrior palette. I didn't pick that one up, but this is the newest like colorful palette that they released. First, I'm gonna dip into the shade Izafa. I've already primed my eyes using the Urban Decay Primer Potion, but just gonna dip into this palette. I'm gonna start by packing this onto the outer corner of the eye. This is very pigmented. Wow. Packing it on and blending. Don't really know what I'm doing right now. I think I'm just gonna kind of, this is gonna be one of those looks where I just kind of do my thing and figure out what I'm doing as I go. But right now, I'm just kind of inspired by a certain color. And hopefully I can create a good red makeup look for Mikai. 
As always, I am holding my brush at the very end of the handle. This is something that I told you guys to do in my eyeshadow techniques makeup video, which was a really fun makeup video for me to do. If you want some eyeshadow techniques, go and watch that video. It's a really, really hard one to put together, but I really enjoyed it. That is very red, wow. Um, I'm just gonna kind of put more of that in there and then kind of extend it in further through the crease. All right, so that is very, very red. Um, I'm just gonna do the other side now. I've just kind of blended the shade here, Asafa, all through the, um, the crease. And I think next step is going to be to add a little bit of dimension. I wanna add in a darker red shade. So now I'm gonna go into the Saharan 2 by Dubious Place, and I'm gonna go into the deep red shade here called Zora. Same brush, actually, and just packing that onto the outer corner as well. I'm gonna take a clean blending brush and just kind of diffuse the edges a little bit, just in case I'm getting a little bit overzealous with my color deposition. It's kind of starting to lean to the pink side, so I wanna kind of reestablish some of that warmth. So I'm gonna go into the shade here called Ofala and um, just kind of take a very, very fluffy brush, just dip in very, very lightly and just kind of dust that right where the red ends and the beige of my natural skin tone starts. Kind of buffing that through the crease to kind of blend out the more pinkish red shades a bit more and just reestablish some warmth. And I look like a panda. All right, so I'm just gonna take some Tarte Shape Tape on my little flat shader brush and I'm going to go in and cut the crease. Okay, so the crease is cut. Now we're gonna go back into the Saharan palette. I'm sorry for jumping around palettes so often. All right, so I'm taking a wet flat shader brush. This one is the Morphe M421. I'm gonna go back into the Festival palette. I'm gonna dip into the white shade here called Uli. It is a shimmer shade. I've heard such amazing things about Juvia's Place shimmers, and I've tried out a couple of them. I'm really enjoying them so far. So this one, let's just pack this. Oh wow, that is bright. I think that looks beautiful. That is a very pigmented, very shimmery white shade. So now to kind of finish off the look, I'm gonna dip back into the shade Zora here in the, the, um, the Saharan 2 palette. And I'm just gonna kind of bring it in to where the edge of the white shade meets the red and just fluff it inwards. Kind of creating a diagonal shape so that the white kind of is higher up here and then it kind of tapers in diagonally. All right, so my powder has been on for a while underneath my eyes, so instead of actually dusting it away with a brush, which I find can kind of disrupt the foundation, especially because this one is not such a matte foundation, so it doesn't sit down completely, I'm just gonna take my sponge right and um, just kind of press the powder right into the skin of the under eyes. And this is a new technique that I've recently learned. It's really good for types of foundations that are more um, dewy and don't sit down completely, but it's also really good because it kind of, the, um, the sponge will take up whatever excess powder you don't need on your skin and just kind of press the rest of it in to give you kind of a nice velvety smooth look. So back into the Festival palette, I think I'm really enjoying this color scheme and just these shadows in general are amazing. Go back into the shade Zaffa again and kind of dust that right here on the lower lash line. Again, Izafa kind of blends out to be more pink than true red. So just keep that in mind if you're wanting a truly like fire engine red look. This is probably not the best shade to go for if you're gonna blend it out. I'd say you'd wanna pack this on if you really want true red or um, warm it up with the shade Ofala. Kind of warm it up. So I'm just gonna dip very lightly into the shade Ofala and dust that on top. And then with a kind of clean blending brush, just kind of blend out the bottom right here. Okay, so I had the wild idea to do a winged liner with a glitter liner on top. And um, yeah, I'm kind of nervous about doing this other eye on screen for you guys, but I'll try my best. I'm gonna have to scooch my mirror a little bit closer so you'll be able to see it, I'm sorry, but this is a very crucial part. So I'm taking my NYX um, Matte Liquid Liner in the shade Black, and I really like this liner a lot. That looks pretty good. Also, good point with the foundation, when I was doing this with my hands, it wasn't like transferring anywhere, so that's really good. Now for the glitter, I'm taking my Stila Magnificent Metals. I am using the shade Kitten Karma. It's a really pretty like kind of champagne gold. Just taking a very precise brush, just dabbing it in there, and then attempting to do a double wing.
I don't have a new mascara for you guys, so I'm just gonna go in with my Essence Lash Princess in Sculpted Volume. This is the purple one. And then one of my favorite techniques is actually taking a little bit of white eyeliner and just popping it right here. This is just gonna help to open up your eyes a little bit more. For lashes, I'm doing my Morphe lashes in the style Heartbreaker. So these are really fluffy, kind of um, wispy and very nice and separated. So I'm gonna just add these on. I love these lashes. They are so beautiful and fluffy. Obviously very long and dramatic. So if you do Instagram makeup or you just like dramatic makeup, these are great for you. But I love these because the band is pretty flexible. It's not super thick to a point where it's gonna be uncomfortable, but it's not super thin to a point where it's just gonna like break apart after one use. So I really like these lashes a lot. Um, and I think they add a good amount of flair to the look. Time for brows. So I have a new brow pencil. I'm gonna use the Rodile Glamo Brow Precision Eyebrow Pencil. This looks very similar to the ABH Brow Wiz. Normally I'm a, like a pomades girl, so I don't really do brow pencils very often, but this one is new to me, so I do wanna try it out for you guys. Oh, this is nice. This is very, very easy to use. It's getting very nice, precise hair strokes. Rodile is one of those brands I don't really hear a lot about here on YouTube. I think it's more of a professional makeup brand. I've really only heard um, Nikki Tutorials talk about it, so this is new. This really makes me want to try more products. I definitely want to try out their contour products because those look amazing for fair skin like me. This is a really nice brow pencil. And this is my more um, annoying brow. Let me know in the comments, do you have one brow that's always like behaving well and then another brow that's just so hard to get perfect? Because for me, that is my left brow. I hate this brow. I really like this brow pencil. It's very, very good. Um, it's just so easy to use and it just blended out so seamlessly. The color is amazing. I really enjoy this one. All right, so for bronzer, I'm just gonna use my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer in the shade Light. Uh, this is such a good bronzer. I love coconut scented products. I know some people just do not like scented products at all, but like, dude, coconut is so good. And then my next step is actually kind of a blush slash bronzer technique. So I've been using the Burt's Bees um, blush in the shade Toasted Cinnamon, which Kathleen Lights has been raving about. I've been using this as kind of a blush bronzer in one. Um, so I kind of dip into this with my br bronzer brush after I do bronzer. Just kind of first apply it where I normally put bronzer and then dust it down to where I put blush. And this adds so much beautiful warmth. It's kind of a blush, kind of a bronzer, kind of both and it just looks gorgeous on the skin. So I've been really loving this. It just adds such a beautiful amount of warmth and kind of summeriness to my skin, I guess. So this is a really, really pretty step. Obviously you can just go in with your regular blush, but because I use such a light bronzer, I wanted to do both today to show you guys one of my new favorite things. But this blush is beautiful. I've been loving this so much. This is a new release as well, and it's just really, really good. So definitely recommend this shade in particular, but, but the blush formula is beautiful. It just blends so gorgeously, and ugh, it's so beautiful. For blush and highlight today, I want to use my Natasha Denona Blush and Glow. Um, it's the mini duo of the blush and the highlighter. I just talked about this in my new makeup releases video that I talked about new products I've been trying out and gave you guys reviews on stuff. I said that I did not really like this one. I still want to test it out for you guys on screen though, just so you can see how it performs. Personally, I don't think it performs very well, but I'm gonna dip into the blush first with a pretty dense blush brush and just kind of fluff that onto my cheeks. And I'm not really seeing anything, so I'm just gonna go back in. And there, there we got a little bit of color on there, so. Took a couple times to dip in there. Personally, I think since you have such a small amount of product in here, having to dip into a pan that many times to get a decent amount of color payoff is kind of stupid. So I don't know, I'm not the biggest fan of this product. I think I will use it definitely and I'm not thinking about returning it in any way, shape or form, but um, I don't know, it's not the best quality and you could definitely get better blushes for the price. That looks nice. I'm gonna go into the highlighter now using my Morphe um, oh shoot, this is the Y14, I think, but the name kind of rubbed off. So just gonna go into the highlighter in here, and see, that's really pretty. Um, it's not as like pigmented as some other highlighters I own. For example, the Anastasia Glow Kits, that is like instant like disco ball shine on your cheekbones. So this is really pretty. I feel like a bit of a softer highlighter. It's not emphasizing a ton of texture, and it's a really nice versatile color. So the highlighter's fine. Um, not super pigmented, and I am having to build it a bit, but it's pretty. So I'm just gonna highlight my cupid's bow, 
my nose, brow bone. I forgot to do inner corner highlight, I just realized. So we're gonna go back into the eyeshadow palettes. Let's take the Festival palette again. Um, I'm just gonna go back into the shade here called Uli. Pop that right in the inner corner. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, yeah. Right on the brow bone. Here, here. Gorgeous. All right, so now our final step is lipstick and we're doing a red look. I wanted to tie in one last thing of red. So for Mikai, we are going to be using the Fenty Beauty Stunna Lip Paint in the shade Uncensored, my favorite red in the world. So that is the red lipstick on. I'm gonna take my hair out now. I'm just gonna take out my hair, fluff it out. I will give you guys my final thoughts on the products. Okay, I'm back. It's about five o'clock. I know it probably doesn't look like it because it's still very bright in here, but um, California is going through this weird time where it's like light at the butt crack of dawn, like 5.30, and then it, the sun goes down at like 7.30. So we're getting, so although it doesn't look like it's been a long time, it has been a long time. Here's what my makeup looks like after a day's worth of wear. First of all, let's start with the foundation. This looks freaking beautiful. I don't know why there's so many bad reviews on this foundation. I think it looks really, really nice on the skin. Um, it hasn't settled into any fine lines, which is a really big concern for me with more like dewy foundations because typically those kind of crease kind of move around. Also, I've just been working all day doing essays. I've had my hand like this. I haven't noticed any transfer or any product moving around, so that's really good. The concealer. It doesn't look amazing. It's just kind of mediocre. Full disclosure, I did cry a little bit today, so um, there's a little bit of wear off right here, but like nothing that major. It's not the best concealer I've ever tried. It's not the worst either. I will continue to test it out. I don't think it's going to like unseat any of my favorite concealers. For example, the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion or the Kylie one or even the Tarte Shape Tape. I really enjoy this one. This one is like, it's just okay. It's not anything special and I don't think it's worth the price tag. The eyeshadow is really, really beautiful. I love how pigmented these are. They don't fade throughout the day. They don't move around. They just look gorgeous. And one of the big concerns with most eyeshadows is sometimes I'll notice that um, by the end of the day, underneath my eyes is where the eyeshadow has gone first. So with this eyeshadow, I haven't noticed any of that. The shimmer still looks amazing. So I'm really impressed with the shimmer shades. And just overall, it's a really, really beautiful formula. The Burt's Bees blush looks really beautiful, as always. I really do like how the Natasha Denona blush looks. However, it just took a lot to build up. The highlighter is still really pretty as well. Um, it's a little bit softer than I would normally go for, but I still like it. Um, what else did I test out? Oh, the brow pencil, amazing. Stayed in place all day. I really like how it worked out. The powder still looks very velvety smooth. I don't notice any um, oiliness going on, and I think it looks really nice and healthy on my skin. Of course, I really like the bronzer. It's always been one of my favorite bronzers, just in general. And then I feel like I'm forgetting something, but the lipstick is really, really pretty as well. Um, as you can see, it did kind of wear off right in the center. Everywhere else it looks really nice, hasn't feathered or kind of smudged anywhere, and I just think it's a really beautiful lipstick. So that is my final evaluation of the products. I will continue to try out the Sunday Riley Foundation. I think it's really beautiful. I'll also continue testing out the Milk Makeup um, Concealer. Probably not as much because I didn't like it as much. And then for the Dubious palettes, my review is coming soon, so stay tuned for that. All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed my get ready with me testing out new products. I really enjoyed making this video with you guys, sitting down, talking to you guys, and creating a red makeup look to honor Mikai. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed down below so you can find out my further thoughts on some of these products as I include them in further videos. Um, also, make sure you're following me on Instagram so you can see makeup looks that I create, like this one. And yeah, if you made it to the very end of this video, I love you so much. Thank you so much for watching my channel.